Thanks to the heavily criminal nature of the Grand Theft Auto series, in each part, we witness many serious conflicts between criminal organizations. These include endless wars between crime families, drug cartels, or following the theme of today's video, gangs originating from the ghetto, which made the streets of Los Santos not safe for anyone. One of the conflicts that stuck in the player's memory was the war between the families and the ballas. We'll talk about this topic based on the events known to us from GTA San Andreas, excluding the families and the ballas from GTA 5. That's because the developers placed them in different universes, the events of which simply do not connect. To start from the very beginning, we have to go to the official website of the game, where we can find information that the conflict between the boys from the families and the ballas began long before the events of GTA San Andreas. The conflict dates back to the 1970s, but as we know very well, the events of GTA San Andreas take place in 1992. While we know the approximate date of the beginning of this conflict, unfortunately, we don't know what year the beginnings of these gangs date back to. What we do know, however, is that over time, both gangs began to grow in strength, recruiting more people ready to give their lives in the name of brotherhood and respect in the hood, at least in theory. We remember what it looked like in GTA San Andreas, we've been brutally convinced many times that the members of the GSF were not guided by any major reasons. For the most part, only money and survival mattered. The way the families operated was not much different from the way the ballas did. The most important thing for these gangs was to kill members of hostile factions, thus taking over subsequent areas, marking the conquered area with famous tags, which we can find a dime a dozen while walking on the streets. In turn, in the conquered areas, gangs could continue their favorite criminal activity. Following the example of major criminal organizations such as the Mafia, both the Ballas and the family's members were able to collect protection money from particular businesses located within their territory. As we know, racketeering has always been a very lucrative way of raising money. It gave high profit and at the same time was low risk. If the business owner chose not to pay for protection, the gang would smash his shop. Paradoxically, in the case of consent, the owner did not receive any protection. The only thing was that the protecting gang did not attack him for no reason. The example of Marty Williams from GTA Vice City Stories can serve as a nice reference to this. There, we also saw how Marty tried to take over more and more businesses. After taking over the place, the man would train his people in their preferred trade, so they would earn money for the gang through the chosen direction of criminal activity, such as the aforementioned racketeering. Another instance, apart from racketeering, was drug dealing, which was mainly the ballas' approach, and thanks to which they gained an advantage over time. The scheme was simple. The ballas placed drug dealers on their territories who earned money for themselves and their gang by selling drugs. In the next point, which particularly interested us, we would like to present to you what the situation on the map looked like before the events of GTA San Andreas. After looking at all the clues, unfortunately, it has to be said that it's difficult to pinpoint all the changes clearly, as there's not much evidence as to which gang owned which district. So first, let's take a look at which territories belong to both gangs at the beginning of GTA San Andreas, which is when the families are basically at the end of their power. As you can see, the ballas control a large part of the city center, but what is worth emphasizing is that contrary to appearances, the families have not lost that much territory outside of a large area in the form of the Idlewood district. The tagging up turf mission explains a lot about this. Namely, Sweet mentions there to CJ that he should start by painting over the tags on the family's turf. Take this paint and go hit shit up. Start with our own set first. Later on. This can be a bit confusing for some people since Idlewood is controlled by the ballers, and yet Sweet calls Idlewood our neighborhood, so we think something must be up. Coming back to the point, the GFSF's problem wasn't the loss of territory at that point, but the fact that the gang was very damaged from the inside out, mainly due to Sweet, who fell apart mentally after Brian's death. Man, Grove Street families used to be tight, man. The little Brian got caught up, you ran off. I don't mean to diss you, man, but you did. I know, but I'm back now. True, homie. It's real spit. Anyways, man, Sweet, he just became a hard man to be with, you know? Then we got bad blood with Seville Boulevard families, and they split from the Grove, then Temple, the hell, they went Lone Ranger too. Sweet man, he did absolutely nothing. There were numerous misunderstandings between the members from individual sets, 
and there was a shortage of money, which in turn translated into a lack of appropriate weaponry, thus becoming a weakness. Ironically, the families were prepared to be taken over by the Ballas, which eventually happened after the mission, The Green Saber, which we'll talk about later. Meanwhile, summing it up a bit, if our suspicions are correct, this is what the map of Los Santos could have looked like before GTA San Andreas, or at least a part of it. As you can see in the attached screen, the families and Ballas occupied a relatively similar amount of ground during their peak times. Unfortunately, everything changed when drugs started to come into play, as the introduction movie shows us perfectly. Sweet, the head of the families, was very much against crack cocaine, seeing what happens to people who regularly use it. It can therefore be inferred that the growing crack epidemic in Los Santos has drawn a thick line between the two gangs, putting the families in a losing position. Sweet Johnson did not intend to enter the crack trade under any circumstances, which in turn translated into the subsequent loss of territory in the following years. Many deride Sweet's reasoning, and no wonder. On the one hand, Sweet was not against murder, racketeering, or other immoral behaviors, but he said no to hard drugs. We don't think anyone can understand this. Going further, it's worth mentioning that the number of families' members began to drop dramatically. Many of them died in skirmishes or decided to leave the gang to join the Ballas. As an interesting fact, we managed to find information on the IGN website that in the 90s, probably at the beginning, the number of members of families was about 15,000. Unfortunately, it's difficult to deduce from the article when exactly so many members were in the ranks of the gang. Anyway, what we know for sure is that the situation on the Los Santos map has escalated to the point that the Ballas have already started to appear in the southern part of the Ganton district, which was shown in the introduction movie. There are many possible interpretations of the fact that the Ballas were in the southern part of the district. However, the most likely version of events is that at the time, this particular area was somewhat controlled by two gangs. Even in the game itself, we can experience this situation, which happens when we attack enemy territory, survive two waves, and die in the last one. The point is that, in such a situation, members of both gangs might appear at the same time. Either way, dealing the final blow to the families seemed inevitable. Everything was carefully prepared, but by a lucky twist of fate, the leader of the families avoided death. Instead, Beverly Johnson, the mother of Sweet, CJ, Kendall, and Brian, bites the dust. And at this point, there's a turning point. Carl C.J. Johnson returns to town, effectively thwarting the Ballas' plans to completely obliterate the families. In the blink of an eye, drastic changes began to take place in the city. The protagonists of GTA San Andreas tried to bring the families back to their former glory with great dedication. The man was involved in small jobs for the gang, such as spraying tags, but also in larger ones, taking part in numerous drive-bys or gang wars. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and it's all because of the Green Saber mission. The Ballas decided to make one last attempt to get out of this unpleasant situation. The final battle was to take place under the Mulholland intersection, where the families should win easily with CJ on their side. Well, it would have been much easier with CJ's help, but as it turned out, CJ didn't show up on time. The Ballas decided to send in any reinforcements to tip the scales in their favor. As a consequence, Sweet was badly injured, and the GSF members had been killed quickly enough. However, that was nothing compared to the police showing up and the officers arresting both Sweet and CJ, two men being the foundation of the families. With Sweet in the prison hospital and CJ away from Los Santos, Big Smoke, the gang's traitor, takes command of the families. In a matter of days, the man tears the families down. Many members are forced to either join the Ballas or run the hell out of there or possibly get shot in the head for questioning the decisions of the new gang boss. The family suffer a devastating defeat and disappear from the map of Los Santos for a very long time. One could even say that the conflict was temporarily averted and ended with an absolute victory for the Ballas. And so the weeks and months passed. The Ballas began to develop even more in the Los Santos area. Big Smoke very cleverly decided to unite the Ballas with the Vagos and the Russians making them aware that they can work together through the popular concept, strength in numbers. However, Big Smoke and the Ballas celebration doesn't last forever, as CJ soon returns to Los Santos with a lot of experience and powerful friends. Mike Torino keeps his word and gets Sweet out of jail during the homecoming mission. 
The problem, however, is that it's still not enough to rebuild the power of the families. The gang is practically non-existent, and there are ballas and drug dealers everywhere. The Johnson brothers, therefore, proceed with a massive purge in the Ganton area, which we also witnessed during the homecoming mission. In the following weeks, the Johnson brothers are also not idle. The men try to get back old homies, like Big Bear, who meant a lot to the gang. Moreover, the men recapture the Idlewood district that once belonged to the families. And the culmination of the whole conflict was the last mission in the game, called End of the Line, in which Big Smoke and Tenpenny died. People who greatly contributed to the apocalypse of the families, which eventually are back on the map, keeping pace with other criminal organizations in the city. There's only one question now. How did the conflict between the families and the Ballas end? And are there any clues to it? Although as players we can lead to a situation where the families take over all the hostile areas in Los Santos, we're not sure this is what happened in the story. We don't know what CJ's fate was, nor do we know if the Ballers were able to recover from what happened at the end of the game's storyline. So we could draw a lot of equally plausible scenarios from this thread as to how the story went on, but we leave the answer to this question up to you, so be sure to let us know what you think. To sum up today's episode, the story of the rivalry between the families and the Ballers has been written in the history of the Grand Theft Auto series. Analyzing the clues left both in and out of the game world, we concluded that both gangs initially had an equal chance to dominate on the West Coast. Unfortunately, Sweet's attempt to play the hero in a world filled with the worst scum and down-to-earth gangsters was a bad idea, and as a consequence, the entire families disappeared from the map for a while. Fortunately enough, things didn't quite go as planned for Tenpenny and the Ballas, because CJ returned, which kind of saved the families from the destructive power of the Ballas and made them avoid total defeat, eventually returning to the top. That would be it for this episode. Now take a look at the two videos currently displayed on the screen, especially if you're interested in the topic of gangs. In the meantime, thanks for watching, take care, and see you soon!